y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about all of my favorite books from 2018. Now I know this video is a little bit later than other people's and it's later than I would have liked to post but I've been a little bit busy and I have two jobs so it's a little cray cray around here. So the way that I do these videos is talking about all the books that I gave five stars to in the year of 2018 and in total I gave 20 books five stars. I will say though five of those were rereads so there are actually only 15 new books to me that I read in 2018 that I gave five stars but actually some of them are also series. I put series all as one so maybe 17, 18 new books to me. I don't know we'll see. But anyway to get this started I'm going to be talking about the five books that I reread real fast that I really 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 love. So I reread Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling but I had not read the illustrated edition yet with illustrations by Jim K. and I really 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 enjoyed this because I love looking at the artwork. It's so so pretty. I still have to read the next two illustrated editions but I loved rereading Harry Potter in this gorgeous new format. Next I reread A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I ended up having to read this book for my British literature class that I took in 2018 and I really enjoyed it like the fifth time around. I read it for the first time back in middle school and I ended up really 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 loving it which is saying a lot because in middle school Avery hated on school required books just to hate on them and didn't give them a fair chance so that just goes to show how much I really 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 loved this book. If you didn't know Christmas Carol classic Christmas story. The main character Scrooge who's kind of like a big grump hates on everybody hates Christmas also and so Christmas Eve he gets visited by three ghosts Christmas past present and future and all three of them take him through time and space to show him the error of his ways and what those errors could do to him in the future. It kind of changes him in his body mind and soul and I loved 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 this book as always and if you don't want to read the book there's actually a bunch of movies out there if y'all are interested. Next I actually reread a book to y'all on my channel. I reread Barbie as Rapunzel. I know this is a little bit weird for y'all who don't know that I did this. A few videos ago I mentioned how, I think in a tag video, how Barbie Rapunzel, Barbie as Rapunzel is one of my favorite childhood books and I reread it over and over and over again and a bunch of y'all did not know that this book existed so I decided to just read it to y'all on camera. This is one of my favorite books as a kid because the art work is just absolutely stunning and gorgeous and I was just obsessed with this book as a kid and I'm still obsessed with this to this day. Next I reread Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. I hadn't read this edition yet but I got this in an owl crate a while ago. I occasionally get owl crates when I have enough money to buy them but uh, this was an add-on book to I forget what book it was but this was an add-on book and I really love this cover and edition. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland was one of my favorite childhood books just like Barbie as Rapunzel and I reread it over and over again and my nursery was even painted Alice in Wonderland because I loved it so much. So I read this for the Booktubeathon. I thought it'd be a quick short read for me because I was going through a lot over the summer. I decided to pick up a book that I knew that I loved and just wanted to reread for the sake of it and I actually also ended up listening to it on audio through Audible and it also has Scarlett Johansson as the narrator and she does a fantastic job with all of the voices. She was perfect. So if you're looking to read Alice's Adventures in Wonderland in a different form Format, I totally recommend the Audible audiobook. And the last reread that I have to talk to you about today is Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. I also read this for the Booktubeathon because I thought it was a short read that I knew that I would love because I also reread this often as a kid. This is just a collection of poetry and artwork for each poem by Shel Silverstein. He's the one who wrote and illustrated The Giving Tree which is very very popular in the children's book genre and again I just really loved rereading this collection of poetry and still love it to this day. Now I'm going to talk about the books that were new to me in 2018 that I all gave five stars to. So the first group of books is actually a series. There are three um, and that is The Conqueror's Saga by Kirsten White. I buddy read all of these with um, Being the Pathologist, Hannah from Being the Pathologist and I reread and I read these last two with Hannah and Vendi from Caught Between Pages. I will link both of their channels down below. I talk about them quite often on my channel because I really love their content and we ended up really, really, really enjoying this series. But basically, if you didn't know about this series, I talked about it often on this channel. This is a historical fiction retelling YA book, gender bending 
Vlad the Impaler and making him a woman. And her name is Lada. And if you didn't know who Vlad the Impaler was, he is very famous in history as the inspiration for Dracula because he's that brutal and bloody. And so we just have this fierce main character girl named Lada and who's trying to win back her kingdom that she and her brother Radu were cast out of because their father sold them to the Ottoman Empire for protection. So this first book is all about Lada and her brother Radu living in the Ottoman Empire with foreign people, a foreign religion, and with no friends except for themselves and one other person. Oh, this whole series is gorgeous to read about and I gave each book five stars because I loved them so much and you follow them from when they're born all the way until their adulthood and it is just fantastic. I totally recommend this series. The next book on this list is Geekerella by Ashley Poston. This is a Cinderella retelling all centered around our main character Elle. She is living with her stepmother and stepsisters because her father has passed and her father and her when they were growing up used to watch this really famous TV show called Starfield which is very much like our Star Trek and they love this TV show so much that her father actually made this whole convention kind of centered around Starfield and the whole fandom industry but this was all before he passed away. This book takes place when they are trying to reboot Starfield and remake this whole TV series and the boy that they cast as the main character and that boy's name is Darren and Darren actually secretly loves Starfield. My dog is whining at the door. Say hello to everybody. Say hello. Oh no, he wants to go take a nap. But anyway, Darren actually really loves Starfield and is freaking fanboying that he has this role. And coincidentally, Darren and Elle end up accidentally connecting through their phones and are anonymously texting each other, but they don't know who the other person is. And this also takes place in the convention center that they're both going to. It's kind of like our Comic-Con. And it's just the story of that. It's very Cinderella-esque and I really loved it. I love Cinderella retellings, especially when you incorporate it with fandom. And I just, I loved it so much. I forgot to tell y'all that this list doesn't really have an order. I all love these books equally, except for the last two. Those are kind of my favorite, favorite books of the year. But overall, I don't have a uh, order to the rest of them. <laughs> Anyways, the next book that I'm going to talk about today is Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. I love Christina Lauren books so much. If you're a romance freak, like me. Uh, Christina Lauren is totally the route to go. I totally recommend starting out with the roomies by them and this is also a great book to start with if you want to get into Christina Lauren. So basically this book is about Hazel and she met this boy named Josh back in college and she also always has secretly had a little bit of a crush on him back in college but she knew that she could never have him because Hazel always thought that Josh was this perfect person that she can never reach in any possible way. She's very quirky. She kind of reminds me of Zoe Deschanel's character in New Girl, Jess. And she's very much like her. She's a school teacher and everything and teaches elementary school. Or does she teach middle school? She teaches one of those, elementary or middle school. But she's very quirky and she thinks that she can never, even back in college, can never have Josh because she's so weird and he's so perfect. But then 10 years later, they end up meeting again coincidentally. And the story goes from there. And I just love this book so much. It was it was so good. It's a friends to lovers trope. They also are trying to set each other up on dates so they always agree to go on double dates with each other but always at the end, the end of the night they end up hanging out instead of with their dates and it is it's just so cute and I love them so much. <laughs> Next is How to Find Love in a Bookshop by Veronica Henry. I read this book earlier in the year. Be patient with me while I try to remember what I thought about this book. But I know that I really, really, really loved it. What first drew me to this book was obviously the gorgeous cover and the title, Who Wouldn't Want to Find Love in a Bookshop? This bookshop is a small little bookshop in, I believe, England. This man ends up dying and passing down his bookstore that he has 
to his daughter and she has to run this bookstore now and the story goes through many different people in this town that they live in and how this bookshop brings people together through friends more than friends lovers wives husbands that kind of thing and it is so cool and great it follows many different storylines and I just remember loving it so much and having that beautiful aspect where they talk about books and everyone loves these books and loves to find books in this bookstore that seems beautiful and I want to visit it and wish that this bookstore actually existed. Next is The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli. So this book has kind of a lot of meaning to me throughout this whole year. I read this book second semester of my freshman year of college um, so early in the year last year, I read this book and I read it for the Zoe 24 hour readathon and that was my first time participating in it and I decided to make a vlog about it. I have no idea why, but that vlog just blew up on my channel. It has almost 2000 views, which is ridiculous to me because most of this video is just me gushing like 15 minutes of that vlog is me just standing there talking about this book. I don't know why people were watching it. Literally, like, I, d I don't even know 2,000 people, like, how... Ugh, I don't understand at all why that video blew up whatsoever. That's one reason why this book holds a special place to me, just because I had no idea I could reach that level of views or impact on people? I don't know. Another reason why I love this book is because I related to our main character, Molly, so so much so basically if you didn't know what the upside of unrequited is we have our main character molly who is plus size and has always had crushes on guys but she's never ever acted upon them because she's afraid of rejection that is something i can relate a lot to i don't normally talk to guys because i'm always afraid of being rejected and i really hate rejection in my life and me with my social anxiety just like it 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 doesn't it doesn't come together very well, me talking to guys. Molly has a twin sister and she is actually a lesbian and so she gets a new girlfriend and that girlfriend comes with a couple of other friends and so they all decided to hang out a bunch of times. So some of the friends that Molly's sister's girlfriend brings into the picture, she thinks he's really cute and he thinks something might happen there. But then Molly also starts a new job and the owner's son of this store that she works at, she also starts having feelings for him as well. <laughs> Molly trying to deal with the grips of telling boys that she likes them or putting herself out there into the world and not fearing rejection from somebody. And I, that's definitely something I have to work on personally. And I just loved Molly so much. I relate to her so immensely. I love this book so much and it will always have a special place in my heart. Next, I have The Hunky Doozy Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas. I feel like I am in the minority for really, really loving this book. I believe this is the best book that she's written or is equal to a Court of Mist and Fury. I know a lot of people liked the book. A lot of people don't really like the series at all. I'm just biased when it comes to Sarah J Maas. I read her books for pleasure. I read her books without being critical at all. That's not how I am for Sarah J Maas, just because her books give me so much enjoyment. So I don't critically read her books whatsoever and I'm very biased towards what she writes but I really loved this conclusion I also have a vlog and review of me crying my eyes out for this video too and I will link that down below as well as the vlog that I talked about for my previous book that I just talked about I'm grateful for Sarah J Maas she has put such a light in my life for reading and no one can ever sway me from not loving Sarah J Maas because she has been a great influence and her work has just helped me with my reading and my love for reading. That being said, another five star read for me this year was A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Maas. There has been a lot of controversy about this book in the book bookish community and again, I read her books for pleasure. I read her books without critically reading them at all. And this was a beautiful story to me. I know nothing happened in this book and that's okay for me. I love this series and these characters so much that I don't care what happens. Like I could literally read 
Sarah J Mass's grocery list and I would give it five stars. I don't care what she writes. I'm gonna love it no matter what. And of course the Akatar series and the characters, I love them more than life itself. I don't care if they're just sitting around a table talking nonsense. I don't care. I loved this book so much and no one can ever sway me, again, from not loving whatever Sarah J Maas writes. So I really loved this book. Honestly, I'm glad that she wrote it because it gave a little piece of the Akatar world to me that I, I, I just wanted more and she gave it to me. And I'm very grateful actually that this book exists. The next book on this list is Obsidio by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Actually the whole entire series, Illuminae over here and Gemini, they're too heavy so I'm not picking them all up. But I reread both of those this year as well. I re-listened to both of them and reread them at the same time. All in preparation for this bad boy. I loved this conclusion to this sci-fi series. If you didn't know what Illuminae is about, we have this sci-fi centered universe where we have Katie and Ezra and the morning that their whole planet gets invaded, they break up. Well, before the invasion, they end up breaking up. Turns out when they get invaded, they go off and get rescued by spaceships, but they're on two different spaceships and um, they end up actually talking to each other through I am messages and it's them trying to deal with the fact that their planet has been overrun, overruled by people, taken over by people. People are basically out to kill them for living on this planet. And like an artificial intelligence is in this book as well as a deathly disease that could harm everybody. Each book is centered around two different characters. So Katie and Ezra are in Illuminae and there are two other main characters in Gemini and another two in Obsidio. In Obsidio, all six of those characters meet up and they don't know each other at all but they end up all meeting up. Also the Illuminae files are all told in I am messages, voice messages, video recordings, pictures. It's just a great format to read and the audiobooks are always fantastic because they have a whole cast of characters and I personally love this series so much and it will always be on these shelves as my favorite, one of my favorite series of all time. The next book that I have to talk about today is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I read this book a couple months ago and just fell in love with it. And I also really loved the audiobook. I often found myself walking to class listening to this book and having to pause it because I just needed to devote personal attention on it and just like sit there and listen. I found myself that I couldn't just walk to class listening to it because it just, I needed, I needed just alone time with it. <laughs> it was very impactful for me and it shed the light on, on a subject I didn't personally know all that much about. So if you didn't know what The Hate You Give is about, we have our main character, Star, and she witnesses one of her best friends being shot by a white police officer when her best friend did nothing to get shot and killed for. And it's just Star trying to figure out what she needs to do after the situation. Should she close in and hide herself because she doesn't want the retaliation from people? Or does she need to speak her voice to speak out for her friend that passed away? It's just the inner dealings with Star and we also get a glimpse into Star's family. That was my favorite part in this whole book to be honest with you was learning about Star's family and watching their family dynamics unfold. It's great to read about. I think this is a book that everybody should read and I have yet to watch the movie but I really plan to soon and this, I just think this is a book that everyone should read. The next books that I have to talk about today are actually two books. I'm just going to be talking about the first book in the series and that is Heart of the Fae by Emma Ham. I listened to this book on audiobook and absolutely loved it. This is my favorite Beauty and the Beast retelling and I recommend it to just about everybody. Everybody who loves fantasy retellings of Beauty and the Beast, just <laughs> romance in general. I loved this book and the sequel Veins of Magic. I read the second one too. I read that one on ebook because the audiobook I don't think even exists yet. I don't think. But these are the two first books in the Otherworld series and these first two books is centered around two main characters and the second book concludes their story but the series goes on with other characters set in the same world. So these are the first two books but the second book concludes Sorsha and Eamon's story. So yes we have our main character Sorsha and she lives in this kind of like inspired Irish land I want to say. She is a doctor in the sense of things. She loves to learn about human body and tries to help people through medicine. She's kind of labeled as a midwife but she loves to 
take care of people and help people through sickness. So there's this big plague that sweeps through her land and she has no idea how to cure her family and her father. So she decides to make a bargain with this, I wanna say goddess kind of person. She's kind of like an evil fairy kind of person. <laughs> she makes kind of like a deal with her saying that, oh, if you go to this land and bring, I think bring back, it's been a while since I've read the first book. I think if you bring back the prince of this island back into civilization, you can get the cure for this disease. I'll give it to you. And she's like, deal. Okay, I'm going to this land. Where is it? And so she gets transported to this island where the ruler prince of this island is actually a prince who was cast out by his own people. He's known as a fae. He's a fae person. And he was cast out because he has crystals coming out of his body and basically making him ugly in his people's eyes. So he gets cast out to this island where a bunch of other people have been cast out by their people. She ends up meeting with him and maybe falling in love with him. First two books are about Sorsha and Eamon. His name is Eamon, I forgot to say that. And I just really loved these books so much. I still have to read the rest of the series and I cannot wait. I also really, really, really love Emma Ham's writing style. She also just started a YouTube channel, so I will link that down below as well. She's actually coming out with like 10 books this year and I can't wait to read all of them. <laughs> Next I have Brightly Burning by Alexa Dawn. This was a buddy read with uh, Spencer from Common Spence a couple of months ago, a while ago. Um, we decided to pick up this book together. We have like differing opinions about it. He liked it, but he didn't love it. Whereas I fully loved this book. If you didn't know, this is a Jane Eyre retelling all set in space. And if you didn't know, Jane Eyre is my favorite book of all time. So I was very excited to read this book. And again, I think I'm biased towards anything Jane Eyre related because I just love when the story gets recreated and remade. And I thought that Alexa Dawn did a great job. I honestly did. I loved how it was centered around in space and how she kind of like revamped the story in a sense for it to be categorized as young adult and have our two main characters Rochester and Stella aka Jane all young adults and still like in their teenage years and still have this story retelling done really great and I really loved it. I loved it a lot. Speaking of Jane Eyre tellings, I have another one for y'all and that is My Plain Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. This is another instance where I'm biased and I just love anything having to talk about Jane Eyre whatsoever and revamping Jane Eyre. A fun way to remake this story. Basically in this book, ghosts exist and Jane Eyre can see ghosts. And the author of Jane Eyre, her name is Charlotte Bronte, right there. And she's actually a character in this book. And basically the way this goes about is Charlotte Bronte is actually really close with Jane Eyre. And Charlotte Bronte is trying to write the story of Jane Eyre because Jane Eyre is her like best friend at the boarding school that they go to. I just thought it was so funny and great. And I just, I loved it. I know a lot of people didn't think so. They didn't really like the ending of it whatsoever. I, I'm just biased and I love anything about Jane Eyre. I can't honestly tell you if this was a good retelling of it because I just, Again, I love anything about Jane Eyre, sorry. <laughs> Next we have Bring Me Their Hearts by Sarah Wolf. Again, if you didn't watch my video, last video where I talked about all the reads that I had in 2018, I don't physically have this book with me right now because I'm letting someone borrow it at the moment. I hope to get it back soon, but I really love this book. So if y'all didn't know, I've been having quite a lot of trouble with young adult fantasy as of late, like new, to me books, young adult fantasy. Like I could read the Throne of Glass books for days, but like newly released or new to me young adult fantasy books, I'm having a lot of trouble with. And finding good ones that like aren't cheesy, aren't like just revamps of like the Hunger Games or dystopian revamp of like Divergent or something like that, or like trying to remake the Akatar world. Like it, it's just been bugging me. The young adult fantasy genre has just been bugging me as of late. I picked up this book mainly because it was a signed edition at Barnes and Noble and I love finding those. 
and it looked really beautiful to look at and the summary intrigued me so I was like if I don't like this book we're gonna have a lot of trouble thank goodness I love this book <laughs> we have our main character Zira who is a heartless and in this fantasy land that this book takes place in heartless people are people who used to be human but witches in this land have taken out the human's hearts put them in a jar and when they do that that person that they took the heart out of become heartless people and can be controlled by a witch and can essentially live forever in their body but they don't really have emotions anymore their memories start leaving them they start losing all their human memories and the only way for heartless people to live is to eat human flesh <laughs> so that's kind of a struggle for Zira as well so Zira is proposed with a task by her witch owner and the whole witch community to go to the land where the king and the prince live the whole royal family because they're having this ceremony slash event where certain women are presented to the prince as a potential future bride and her task is to steal the heart from the prince so the witches can turn the prince into heartless which can essentially control the king and the whole land because the witches and the mortals have had a clashing battle and war for years so it's Zira trying to pretend to be a human girl in this world while kind of like competing for the prince's heart as well even though she doesn't really have emotions turns out she may start to get emotions for this person and I love this book so much if you are into YA fantasy please pick this book up it is one of the best books that i've ever read in that genre okay so we're into the top two books of 2018 the second book being the kiss quotient by helen huang i love this book so much and i relate to it immensely because our main character stella stella actually has asperger's but she works really really well with numbers and algorithms so she has a great job because of that but stella has one big flaw that she knows that she has is that she is horrible with guys and being intimate with them so she decides to hire a male escort named michael to teach her the ways of dating and michael is this korean american man who kind of feels bad for stella for being so rigid when it comes to guys so he decides to help her out them maybe falling for each other and I loved it so much. This is one of like the best romance books that I've ever read in my entire life and I related to Stella so much because I found myself in the same situations or thinking the same things that Stella thinks. It just it opened my eyes to a new world and I loved it so much and I'm so grateful that Helen Wong wrote this book because I love it so so much. Okay my favorite book of the year is probably no surprise to many of you because I talk about this book constantly and how it is my favorite book of the year and that is Roomies by Christina Lauren. This book is a great great romance book. Oh the tabbies are coming out whoops. Okay so in this book we have our main character Holland who decides to sneak down to the subway station basically daily to try and maybe get a glimpse of this really gorgeous, talented guitar player who plays in the subway station all the time named Calvin. And she hopes to get a glimpse of him and watch him as much as she can, kind of on the edge of stalkerish, but she just can't help being enthralled by his music and his presence. But then one night that she decides to go watch him perform, she ends up in an accident getting mugged and attacked but calvin saves her he runs away once the police come to check on this whole situation and it's leaving a bunch of questions in holland's mind holland's uncle is actually a really big broadway producer and this is big well-known orchestra conductor her uncle is trying to find a major role that has to do with playing the guitar alongside a cast member in this really big broadway production and he's having trouble finding someone with the right talent for this role and so holland brings her uncle down to the subway station to listen to calvin play and the whole audition process happens and they really want calvin as this role but one big problem is Calvin can't have the role because he's in America illegally. He's actually from Ireland who was here on a student visa and expired a long, long time ago. And Holland really wants to pay back Calvin for saving her life essentially. And she want, really wants to pay back her uncle for being such an amazing person. So she hatches a plan to help Calvin get this role, which includes 
marrying him so he can become a U.S. citizen. And so it's just the repercussions of that and I love it so much. I love Calvin and Holland. This whole story is just fantastic and anyone who has it any inkling to read a Christina Lauren or a romance book needs to read this one. It's kind of like a fake relationship turns to real relationship story and I love it so much and recommend it from the bottom of my heart. So there you have it. Those were my favorite books from the year of 2018. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. I would love to know. I would love to talk about all of these books with y'all. But anyways, thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all soon with the next video. Bye.